Recipes for Technical Trading Success in Cook's Kitchen. Welcome to the Technology Supercycle. That's a phrase I coined about six months ago to talk about what was happening in technology and the economy and why everybody trying to call the top in the technology cycle, especially semiconductors, was going to be wrong. Let me show you part of that report that I wrote back in December. Um, my summary, innovation is driving earnings growth in unseen productivity and efficiency that keeps inflation low and investment high. Those are the two keys. You skip down to that uh, middle blue bold line. But we haven't really seen this powerful growth show up in the GDP of our 2% economy for the past eight years or so. Okay, so we know that technology is a huge driver of the economy. It's, you know, our, our, for everything from our smartphones, uh, you know, tablets, uh, what, the, what we're able to do with the cloud, what we're starting to see happen with automation and AI. We know that stuff is driving some kind of growth, but you don't see it in the government productivity numbers. All right, back to my, uh, so my thesis has been technology is actually accelerating growth, but we didn't see it in the government data because productivity was also accelerating in ways uncaptured or unpublicized by the Bureau of Labor Stats, and thus changing both the numerator and the denominator of several derivative measurements. Okay, so the government gets productivity wrong. So here it is, from my report I summed it up. I uh, got a little help from Brian Westbury, the economist at First Trust, one of my, probably my favorite economist of this bull market, just because he's always on top of the data. In fact, just recently he won uh, some uh, award for being the most accurate this year. Okay, so why do I keep saying we need to buy technology? Well, because I know that something's missing. The productivity is there, but you can't see it. Brian Westbury, actually the day I wrote this, December 11th, 2017, he put out a, a, a new Westbury 101 video called The Fallacy of Weak Productivity. And he explains it as, you know, the productivity by the government is defined as the change in outputs divided by the change in inputs. Well, it's got over 40% of the numerator dominated by the federal, state, and local governments in the equation. And those areas do not produce productivity. So that's the missing link number one. Why don't we see the productivity in the government's data when we know that mobile, the cloud, and AI are making businesses and individuals more efficient and more productive. Okay, missing link number two, inflation. Where, you know, where's the inflation? Um, I found a, a great resource in late November. The chief economist for Vanguard, Joe Davis, wrote a very simple and provocative piece titled, The Federal Reserve versus Moore's Law. Um, and I've got a couple of summary paragraphs here. You know, feel free to pause the video and read what he's talking about. But let's just back up for anybody who doesn't know what Moore's Law is. That, uh, you know, was a guy who was at Intel back in the 60s, and he predicted that uh, semiconductors would shrink by half and double in productivity every 18 months. And Moore's Law has continued to be a force. I, I'm going to remind you in a moment what's taking over Moore's Law is it sort of levels off. Uh, and that would be coming from NVIDIA's uh, GPU chips. All right, so back to just taking a glance here at what uh, Joe Davis from Vanguard had to say. Um, he says, Moore's Law is about more than smartphones, TVs, and Amazon Prime. It's the knock-on effects. Um, what else does he talk about here? So, I mean, he gets into the economics of it, why it doesn't show up in the inflation numbers. You know, and it's, it's as, sometimes it's as simple as just talking about, you know, how Amazon to bust prices on everything and makes everybody compete with them. But he says it's more than that, and it, and it is about the efficiency. Okay, moving along here. So this is, again, from my report, December 11, 2017. Um, actually, I, I updated it uh, uh, a few weeks later uh, because I did a report on Micron. Okay, Micron's coming in here. I just saw the CEO of Micron, Sanjay uh, Mehrotra, I believe is the way you say uh, his name. He was on CNBC December 20th. All right, and John Fort. John Fort is the Silicon Valley guy. He knows these tech companies in and out. He knows the right questions to ask. So he's talking to Sanjay about DRAM and NAND flash. If, uh, if you're not familiar with Micron, they make memory. The DRAM, 
and the NAND flash. You know, and, and, um, and so it's everything from, uh, from PCs to data centers to mobile. All right, so, um, so I'd already written about my technology super cycle December 11th. Here's Sanjay uh, just riffing on it, explaining why Micron uh, you know, has years and years of growth ahead of it when everybody's trying to call the semi-cycle top. Here's the one quote I, that stood out to me. Sanjay says, we have barely seen the tip of the iceberg in artificial intelligence. And, uh, you know, and at the time I owned Micron, NVIDIA, and Applied Materials, uh, probably just got out of LAM research and got back in. But here it is, the CEO of Micron telling you, you know, that, that, that memory is not a commodity business anymore. They are making specific solutions for all kinds of companies in data centers, in mobile, for AI, uh, automation, Internet of Things. All right, so this was back in December uh, when I was thankful to have uh, Sanjay confirm. Then this week, uh, so I believe on May, it would have been May 21st, I think, uh, Micron pre-announces that Q3 is going to be, you know, they raise guidance on sales and profits. Then they have their investor day the next day. Here, he, uh, let me just summarize this. Sanjay basically dropped the deck on Wall Street, and the deck had 150 slides in it, and it basically blew away any bare thesis about the top in the semiconductor cycle or my, the fears about Micron, you know, oh, there's going to be this saturation of memory supply and Micron's going to be forced to cut, cut prices, and then they're going to be cutting er, earnings guidance. Not happening, folks. All right, so let's look at some of uh, Sanjay's 150-slide deck that he dropped on Wall Street. Uh, this is one that stood out to me. He's talking about the data economy here, okay? Um, look at that green line. Well, the green line is a future opportunity, but look at the one just above it. In 2017, the data economy was worth $128 billion for memory and storage, not just to Micron, the whole industry. Memory and storage, industry revenue, $128 billion. And it's going to keep growing. OK. Uh, by slide 11 of his 150 slide deck, Sanjay was into, already into AI, of course, right? So what, it, what, what are the, the next frontiers? And, and one for AI is computer vision, seeing into the body. That, that uh, diagram on the left is diagnosing pneumonia with 85% certainty. Um, and we've got more video, more data, more value, requires more compute, memory, and storage. The slide right below that shows uh, a device uh, doing facial identification uh, because smartphones are just becoming more intelligent. It doesn't say it on here, but um, what uh, Micron wanted to point out, Sanjay said, uh, the, the next year's smartphone, the most advanced smartphone, is, uh, smartphone is going to have like... Uh, 12 gigs of DRAM and uh, a, a terabyte of processing power related to that. Um, and I mean, they're just going to be AI phones in, in what they're able to do and process. All right, uh, moving along here. Vehicles. Obviously, autonomous driving is coming despite problems with the Uber, despite problems at Tesla. Um, NVIDIA, you know, taking it slow. They know it's the future, whether that whether the future has been delayed for five to ten years, it's still coming. It's going to be creeping in in all kinds of vehicles. And, uh, you know, as Micron sums it up, you're, you're working on faster than human response to make up for human error. Um, the reason I was an mobile, early Mobileye investor before Intel bought them is because Mobileye knew they couldn't take over the world with autonomous driving right away, even though regulators would want it. They thought, well, let's take it a step at a time. What we need first is AEB, automatic emergency braking, because one of the most common accidents is the rear end collision, right? Especially with people being on their smartphones. So if we can have cars prevent, you know, be prevented from rear ending you uh, by automatic emergency braking, that's a huge step. It would save, would save lives, would save hundreds of millions in medical bills, if not billions. And, you know, so that's the way you work it in. You make cars smarter. Nobody wants to give up driving right now, but, you know, it's, it's going to come in stages. Okay, the, the bottom half of this slide here, these are actually two slides, uh, cloud data centers. What's going on there? 
I mean, you see, you see the tremendous growth. So there, a lot of his, uh, Sanjay's uh, pr growth projections here look at going from calendar year 17 to calendar year 2021, uh, two and a half times growth in the cloud data center CapEx. That's Amazon, Microsoft, buying NVIDIA memory. I, I'm sorry, Micron memory and NVIDIA AI chips. Uh, here's an important uh, note. Look at this six times DRAM, this uh, stat right here. AI training workloads require six times the DRAM of a standard cloud server and two times the solid state drive. Micron also unleashed some new like four stack uh, you know, quad level uh, capacity solid state drive that is just supposed to be the industry, you know, the, the new industry standard it will become. Uh, and they're partnered with Intel on that. All right, I think this is the last slide from Sanjay. So he's, he's summing it up talking about the virtuous cycle, um, what I call the technology super cycle, uh, driven by increasing data value. So creating more data, processing more data, storing more data. Create, generates ever-increasing demand for memory and fast storage. Um, so here are the growth projections on that bottom slide. You can see we already looked at. Um, uh, so this is and this is this is just this is specific to micron growth, right? They did uh, you know, so the potential opportunity they're looking at is going to double into calendar year 21, 62 billion in the data center. Uh, mobile is only going to grow, you know, 20% uh, in four years, but still that's 45 billion to 54 billion. The Internet of Things grows 70% from 9 billion to 16 billion, and automotive is a smaller segment. All right. So this is why I remain a technology investor because, as much, you know, as cyclical as semiconductors and technology were in the past in the old PC world, we're not in that world anymore. We're in the data center world, the data economy, mobile, uh, automation, autonomous driving, AI. So that kind of stuff is, you know, keeps the cycle going as companies invest. And really what I say about NVIDIA all the time is NVIDIA basically is creating new industries with AI. Now, the one chart I don't have that I love to show from NVIDIA is, and I mentioned Moore's Law earlier. So you look at Moore's Law just creating that, you know, shrinking of chips and doubling of power every 18 months. Well, it started to level off, they think, in this decade. It's, you know, started to, started to peak a little bit in the, in the rate of growth. Uh, but what uh, NVIDIA CEO uh, Jensen Wong said is, hey, you can think about what a GPU chip can do as accelerating Moore's law. So now it, it ramps vertical again. So basically GPU chips, graphical processing units, AI, massively parallel processing, that is accelerating Moore's law. And he thinks it'll create a thousand fold increase in processing power by the year 2025, right? A thousand fold increase. That is part of the technology super cycle. All right, last chart I want to show you, smart cities. Um, this comes from Frost and Sullivan Research. Uh, they estimate smart, smart cities to create a huge business opportunity with a market value of $1.5 trillion. And you can pause this if you want and just look at the different growth areas of what a smart city would be. Smart buildings, smart healthcare, smart transportation, infrastructure, energy, security, governance. Um, you know, and this is, this is being driven both by business and government. So. That's my technology super cycle. Let me just take a glance at my notes. Oh, let's talk about Micron's valuation, right? Because uh, memory was has been considered a commodity and because the technology cycle should, the semiconductor cycle should top soon, Micron is trading with a five times forward PE, about five times, let's say 1150, you know, gets you to uh, almost 60 bucks. The, the stock finally spiked this week. So, and some people think that's where it should trade. Analysts, a few analysts are climbing over each other. You saw the bulk of analysts raise their price targets from about 65 to about 75 after this uh, investor day and raised guidance. But you got a few competing. Back during the correction, Nomura raised their price target on Micron to 100 bucks, basically saying, you know, Cooker's tech super cycle is real. It's not topping soon. And then uh, Stiefel could not be outdone by that. On May 15th, they went, uh, <laughs> they upped the ante by a buck and went to 101 ahead of this week. So very smart by, that's Kevin, Ka Kevin Cassidy at Stiefel. 
after this event, uh, Cassidy came out and he went to 106, the new street high on Micron, 106 bucks. That's his 12 month target because he's saying you can pay nine times. So nine times 1150, 1175 gets you to 106 because that's his view of the technology super cycle. All right. And, you know, so do you pay? Do you pay five or six times right now for Micron? Absolutely, you buy it at 60 bucks. I mean, it's, it's still trading underneath there. And yeah, if a, if a full-blown trade war, you know, between China and the US erupts, it's gonna hurt technology. And you're gonna see all these valuations go down. But I bet you we get through it in three to six months and you'll, you'll be able to buy those. So, you know, you're kinda, I think that's the uncertainty in the market right now and why the S&P just can't get back to, say, 2800, where I think it should go this month, um, is this uncertainty. But I, but, I, but I continue to invest in companies like NVIDIA, Micron, LAM Research, and Applied Materials are the wafer fabrication equipment makers for a Micron. So Micron is our customer, Samsung, um, and those sort of uh, you know, picks and shovels, arms dealers, for the actual chip makers are seeing tremendous growth too because the CapEx is there. The CapEx is there from Micron, Samsung, Apple. All right, I think I've uh, made my thesis clear. If you want a copy of that report that I wrote back in December, the technology super cycle, just e email me at kcook at zax.com. Uh, I'll give one out to the first 100 people who email me. All right, talk to you soon. Thanks for joining me in the kitchen.